We're going through the BIOS for the Z170 Deluxe from ASUS. Um, there it is. <laughs> uh, now, this uh, is the main sort of splash screen that, that you come into. Uh, simply press F7 to go through to the um, advanced section. Now, um, I am I'm pumping in uh, quite a few uh, extra volts in this particular setup um, as we go down to AI tweak, you can see I've got six. First and foremost though, if we go back up to the top, you land in on the main um, tab. Go to the left, you've got the My Favorites tab where um, you can pull in particular um, settings that you might use frequently. Um, for any sort of tweaking stuff, look under um, AI tweakers. So any sort of um, overclocking settings that you want to find, that will be in here. So your, pro your primary ones will be in this base, um, uh, menu and then you've got some menus for other settings so for example DRAM timing for for our viewers who are familiar with the ASUS overclocking what would be the biggest uh, items here of new that they have changed then that would be new to them if they're going to Z170 okay so they're moving from an uh, let's say Haswell platform so Z87 or Z97 um, one of the big things they'll, they'll find is the internal CPU power management there's really not much there and that's due to the to the lack of a fiber. Um, when you go to the external Digi Plus power settings, a lot of different settings to play around with. Yep. Okay. So that's because the VRM for the CPU is now on the motherboard and taken off die. Um, now, what else we got? We've got Tweakers Paradise. So this is just a few more um, settings that you can change. You'll note that I've got the DRAM VTT voltage um, uh, set in, in there, and that's. Uh, Typically, you want that set to as close as possible half of the uh, DRAM voltage. Tweakers Paradise. That's an interesting menu name for a motherboard. Yeah. So is that something that's come out of the ASUS over, um, in-house overclocking? Over absolutely, clockers? absolutely. So this is um, especially when you look at the uh, Rampage series. Uh, Tweakers Paradise is has a huge amount of settings in there. This is a place where the likes of Shimano, TL, Elmore. Uh, getting all the little, tiny little minute changes that they, they like to make and putting all of those into these, these settings. So this is where you could lose hours upon hours upon hours just tweaking settings. Um, and that's really what the higher uh, echelon of, of overclocking is all about, those tiny tweaks to get those last little gains. Um, for the mere mortals, um, the large majority of these settings are, you can actually leave on, on, on auto because you've got the, the overclocking masters um, giving their feedback and creating these these, these algorithms that will um, change the uh, voltages appropriately for whatever frequencies things are being set to. So moving through, um, what we're doing here today, I'm just going to be booting in at, at, at 4.5 uh, gigahertz. I've got the V core and this is hugely, like so much higher than what it needs to be for that sort of uh, frequency, but it's purely for the um, sake of demonstrating the heat um, uh, output. Um, so this little CPU is being tortured a bit, but hey, it's overblocking. <laughs> um, then we've got the uh, you know DRAM voltages, uh, VCCIO and the SA voltages uh, paired with DRAM voltage and DRAM uh, uh, VTT are going to be the voltages uh, largely responsible for how far you're able to push your uh, DRAM. 1.15 volts is certainly where you want to be putting um, these settings for 24-7 operation and these are the, the maximum settings as per Intel specification. So going beyond these you really do risk um, damage to the uh, CPU especially on the uh, system agent voltage. So I have done a little bit of testing up at like 1.25 volts um, but there are you know color coordination um, um, there are yeah, the, color coordinated yeah. Um, and that will go to red if it's an extreme. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, typically speaking, though, um, you really don't want to go yes. beyond 1.15. Okay. So um, these these here, except for the uh, CPU core. So these four other settings are essentially where you want to be after the maximum 24 seconds. Just operation. to remind our users, first in this video, we're doing a demonstration of the motherboard LED feature. So don't don't. We have here set 1.495 voltage. It's for ludicrous. You don't need that much. No, no, bad <laughs> idea. Don't do it. Do as we say, not as we do. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, okay, so and then you know again more tweaking stuff, which unless you're one of the hardcore overclockers, you don't need to be playing around. With this. Just leave that at auto; it's fine. Um, alrighty, so um, going through, you've uh, got all your advanced settings for PCH system agent, etc., which are pretty similar to the previous generation. So. Um, moving across, you've also got your uh, uh, monitoring as well. So you'll see the temperature there is, is running quite high and that's to do with the, the high voltages that I'm pushing into this thing as well as the fact that we're in a bit of a stuffy room right now. So um, otherwise, what I've seen previously in terms of my uh, operating temperatures, when you're, when you're sitting at say 4.5 gigahertz with 1.35 volts, um, you could be idling at um, anywhere from uh, 29 degrees to um, uh, 32 degrees and that's in an, an ambient sitting around um, 21, 22 degrees uh, ambient. But uh, we can keep on moving along now. Um, the fans, I've got them set to like noisy mode. Um, you could use a uh, Q fan to um, go in and um, actually tune them all and that'll um, go in and uh, in, in, a, in a smart way to pick up all, all the temperature sensors and everything and then say, okay, how, how much um, uh, fan speed do we need to get air throughput to pull this down, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I've just got them all pretty much set to DC mode, uh, just cranking them along uh, because I'm uh, doing some blocking and right now I don't care less about noise. So- Max um, fans all the time. Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, then, um, yes, a few other things. When I'm um, set, setting up a system and tweaking a system, I always go through and just dis uh, disable the uh, boot, uh, 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 boot logo and I set a, a five second delay. Um, that's just old school. I'm used to checking out post when that pops up. And um, yeah, even though, you know, it doesn't give you much these days, it's, it's sort of um, all, all done before the, the video actually um, uh, uh, initializes. Um, it's just a habit. <laughs> Um, Tool-wise, it's got overclocking profiles um, like in previous generations. Uh, but one of the cool things that I like is actually GPU post. Um, so if, if uh, let's say you're in a scenario where you're doing uh, uh, LM2 benching on, on GPUs, one of the things that can happen is that you can have the, um, the GPUs uh, initialize at a lower link speed. And that can be a, a real frustration, so you have to uh, either uh, reboot, hopefully that that can fix it. If not, then you then have to start uh, looking at um, you know reseeding, and that's just annoying. Yep. But being able to get that here in the BIOS saves going in, into Windows and having to open up something like GPUZ and check the link speed there. So um, I think I'm actually just going to jump into Windows and we can continue a bit more stuff uh, there. Um, um, so we haven't, you, you told us earlier we have a new feature on this one to automatically download the BIOS. That's so correct, that's correct. Quick correct. look at that so, before we go into um, I don't actually have Yeah, the, just, just so our users can get appreciation. Yeah, yeah cool. Yeah. So here it would simply go over to via internet, hit next, and then it would go through the uh, process of pulling down the uh, file from the, the ASUS server and then installing it, flashing the BIOS and updating and, and coming through. So it's all about making things a lot um, a lot more streamlined and a lot more simplified. It saves the process of having to firstly go to the product page, go to the support tab, then go go over to the driver and BIOS up, update. It's part of this driver, feature, blah, when, blah, you're blah, going blah, to blah. The, when you're going to the BIOS and you have the internet connected, mm. does it have a pop-up saying a new BIOS is available or somebody has to go into this as usual and check it? It's more of a, 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 a manual process of, of going through and, and you, you've got different um, connection types as well. Um, so, I think, uh, yeah, there we go. So DHCP, uh, 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 PD. OE and fixed IP. So um, just ensuring that you're able to dial out through the network and, and um, get get that network connection. Okay. So um, so that's all within Easy Flash three. Um, and actually, what what it was showing there as well is that you still have you know um, the the usual support via yeah. USB and things of that nature. So it's not to say that you have to do everything via internet, but it's another option there. You still also have things like USB BIOS flashback and 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 these sort of functionalities. Um, so it's more of a, a plus one rather than a, um, a whole new removal and a new tool. 
Um, we've also got uh, secure erase, so you can go through and um, do a full wipe of the um, drive. So this is great for uh, end users that are wanting to get, ensure that when they're doing a fresh install of their, their operating system, they're also getting a fresh um, uh, uh, SSD coverage also. So um, that's that's really good in, in terms of ensuring that your your SSD performance is always at that fresh level instead of tailing off at, as the rubbish gets collected. Um, let's go out now. So are we going to be, what are we going to show our users now? Are we going to show them the new LED feature on the... Yeah, why not? Let's do that. So I'm just going to hit F10, which will save an exit, and we're going to boot up. So this is coming in at uh, 4.5 gigahertz, uh, and um, that's with uh, 1.495 volts, which is ridiculous for that sort of frequency. But okie dokie. So, using the Asus lighting control, we're able to choose you know, what, what sort of colored uh, lighting, uh, lighting we want. Hit apply, give that a moment to um, initiate. So I've got the special effects still on, so we can go to static. Apply, blue light. We want, let's say, Green, so we've got a green cathode um, setup. Green, you know, yellow, yellow. It's all, all within the realms of possibility. So um, that's a 256-bit um, color spectrum. Uh, we've also got different um, methods of, of that lighting coming through. So um, in this instance, it's pulsating, also known as breathing, but it's sort of coming in, coming out. And um, it's got a bit of blue, I like blue. It's, uh, like that sort of electric loop. And if we want to do strobing, that's coming on and off. And then we've also got the opportunity to just go through the whole whole rainbow where it's just fading between the uh, color spectrum. So then um, if we wanted to, we could make it, you know, bounce along to music um, using the uh, music effect or we can do the CPU mode. So, um, from 20 through to 40 degrees, you're going to have that um, green color, and then going into yellow in from 40 to 60, 60 plus is red. So, let's get some load. We'll use some large in place FTTs. I'm just going to bring up um, this here. Actually, wrong one. I want TPU. Okay. So, the TPU module will be able to give us some um, readouts for CPU temperature, so that's already quite high. Um, and throw some load on this thing as well. So if we go down here, task manager, performance, we'll see that the load's just skyrocketed up to 100%. And we've gone through now to the red light being shown on the uh, PCH RGB, because it's clearly past that threshold. In fact, we're up to 68 degrees, so 60 degrees is where the red comes in. So um, that was a pretty effortless little example there of how to go through and plug the lighting. Um, what else can we do while we're in here? Let's also have a look at um, some USB 3.1 performance while we're at it. So we've got the Asus USB 3.1 Enclosure. This is the prototype for um, a product that will be coming to market shortly. And um, so what I'm going to do, now this particular prototype needs one connection just for power. So I'm going to put that in. And we're using a Type-C USB connection, which can be put in either way. No problem. So there's no more, you know, 360 uh, degree polarity checks for those that know that little joke. So that'll be registered in just a moment. That'll pop up. There we go. Now, what I've got on here is 11.8 gig of uh, Adobe program files. I just ripped that off one of the, the designer's uh, desktop PCs just to uh, get some chunky files to work with. So let's just look at quick transfer rates. Uh, for starters. So we've got almost 12 gig of files. That'd probably be a season of Game of Thrones, wouldn't it, Dominic? Game of Thrones? Oh, I'm Game not King? a game... Unfortunately, I'm not a Game of Thrones person. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I missed out. Um, but you can see we're getting some 
pretty massive transfer speeds. Now this is after it's um, settled down, you, you initially get burst speeds up of you know, two, 260 megabytes uh, per second. We've got sustained speeds here, you know, 150 or so. So um, the fact that we've already transferred almost half of the um, uh, 12 gig of files, it just goes to show how fast the uh, USB through. Okay, works. so just according to the Windows generate copy thing, we're doing under 200, 200 uh, megasecond on just these various small, various sizes of files that come with the Adobe installer. Yeah, so. Um, to, so, do. so just to recap, so yep. this is an SSD in a USB 3.1 enclosure connected to the Intel 3.1 USB 3.1 that's new on Skylark. Correct, correct. And then what I can show you as well is um, here's one I prepared earlier. I did a test of over here. You can see the uh, external device. And this one here is actually the Corsair Force LS uh, 240 gig SSD. And on the right here is a little homemade M2 uh, 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 X2 uh, USB 3.0 uh, external drive, which I made for myself because I had a leftover um, M2 drive. So um, you can see, okay, so in the time that we've been speaking, we've just transferred 12 gig of files. So, um, anyone that's struggling so would from, understand from, how fast. From the Intel side of things and from yeah. this ASUS prototype enclosure, so basically we're bottlenecked by the SSD which is in now. Correct. Correct. So the memory now needs to catch up with the bandwidth available. So through USB 3.1, we've got a 10 gigabit per second um, uh, yeah, so which is significant given that SATA three. Yeah, so the demo we have, the demo we done is just barely touching the surface of what is capable of this new platform. Certainly, certainly, and um, you can see compared to internal storage, you know, this is lightningly. It's it's quick. It's very very quick. Um, so that's uh, yeah, that's basically uh, those items and. Now the last one, um, see, it's kind of funny, it almost takes more time to de delete the files than to transfer them over. <laughs> but still, for this says, this might not be that clear on camera, but this is 90,000 files, so you just press delete on. Correct. And so it, that, that does take the amount of time. So this is actually an interesting demo by itself, and you might not think so. Mm -hmm. So um, the fact that we were able to transfer those files off that drive in what? It was what maybe one and a half, two minutes, something like that, um, to be able to do that so quickly, so effortlessly. That's what this this platform really does open up um, a lot of storage connectivity opportunities because that's not even the fastest connectivity option on there. Uh, you can also be running uh, NVMe and also uh, M2 X X4 drives, which that's a, a 32 gigabit per second link. So you've got three times that speed. So we're going to be seeing some amazing uh, configurations, especially considering that um, when you start to do a RAID 0 setup with uh, uh, two um, uh, uh, NVMe drives, um, you can be hitting up to uh, 3,500 megabytes uh, uh, per second, um, which is incredible, utterly incredible.